Hello and welcome to another vlogcast? Pod vlog. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, so I know that we are in the full thick of summer right now and that for many of you, you may feel like it's a little too early to start thinking about back to school, but I just wanted to put this PSA out there and to kind of get your brains thinking of things that we can be doing to prepare to back to prepare for back to school season so that when the time comes it just feels a little more peaceful and a little easier and when it comes to this stuff i don't believe that you need to do these like grand robust things to make your future self say like thank you so much for looking out this is flowing a lot better than it has in the past. I actually think it's a lot of little tiny things that add up. Just think about it, like whenever you have like parties and stuff like that, it's usually not the big stuff that's the most stressful. It's all the little tiny things that kind of come along at the end and kind of tying up loose ends, especially when you're already tired. That's the kind of stuff that wears me out personally. So I think when it comes to big transitions in our routines that if we can identify and get ahead on those little things that'll make your life easier in the future so <clears throat> excuse me so yeah in today's pod vlog vlog cast <laughs> um that's what i want to talk about so in all transparency i've been thinking about this stuff honestly since may when school first um, let out. I've actually have had some really bumpy transitions into back to school um, and there have been times where I've just been completely unprepared and so every year I feel like I get a little better at starting earlier and earlier. So um, these are just a couple of those little loose end things that I've been working on throughout the summer and even if you know summer is halfway over when you're just watching this and you don't feel like you have much time left I would just encourage you to think about the areas of your back to school transition that have been a pain in the butt for you in the past and think about what could be done differently so that that transition can be a little smoother so here are some things that have been problematic for me and how I try to lay the foundation in the summer so that when school starts it doesn't feel like that big of a pain in the butt <clears throat> now with that being said I don't think I've ever went to a school year where I've gotten everything done and it was just this beautiful smooth transition well once again like I said it's just the little things that can make it a little easier so number one um, school forms so you guys know I talk a lot about my kids and how they have food allergies so there's special things that they need at school for example like medicine um, EpiPen Benadryl some of my kids have to have an inhaler and if your school district is anything like mine you can't just have that stuff up there that requires you to have a doctor's note or maybe there are specific forms of the school that need to be completed so I personally like to get all that stuff done in the summer. There was one year when I was trying to get my kids started in school and either I forgot about the forms or I didn't realize that I needed the forms. And so um, at this point I'm like very paranoid about anaphylaxis and making sure that my kid doesn't have a reaction at school. Somebody brings a sun butter or a peanut butter sandwich to school or something like that. And so. Um, I called the doctor I was like hey I learned that in order for my kid to have their life-saving medicine at school that you need to complete this form and then my doctor was like well I can't complete the form because you haven't had your annual checkup it's been 13 months and we can't fill out forms unless you've seen us within the year and literally on the first day of school I had to send my kid to school without medicine that day which wasn't a good feeling and then after school I had an unexpected trip that we had to make to the allergist so that they could get their you know annual appointment done and then we s submitted the paperwork um, and the doctor was able to complete it for us and we were able to get it done and my son was able to take his medicine the next day and so it's just 
that was really an anxiety provoking uh, provoking kind of situation like you don't want to be in a point where you know your kids don't have what they need if they have specialty items at school and you have to like throw in this last minute you know trip and coordinate your day around something that wasn't expected or planned at least for me I don't like to do that so um, I learned my lesson and I've been on top of it so we I, I think like in early June or May I called to schedule our appointment to do our annual checkup um, I took we actually had our checkup I think last week because it took several weeks to get in um, I dropped off all the paperwork and I'm like take your time just make sure you have it to me before August <laughs> so they said it usually takes about a week so hopefully on the first day of school I'll have what I need to walk in um, on that first day so um so maybe your kids might need other forms like I know some of you guys have like sports and you kids need like physicals and things like that and so if there's any way to like just get that stuff over with scheduled and done so that way you won't be in the back to school rush um those are all things to think about um trying to think of what other type of paperwork we have i know we did like registration you don't want to wait until the last minute to do all that paperwork because you all know they're going to be sending a ton of paperwork on the first week of school anyway so if there's anything you can do to reduce your burden why not other things that I think about when I'm preparing for back to school in the summer is what are all the things that I potentially don't want to pull my kids out of school for um, so for me I like to do our checkups in the summer like I have my boys they have their birthday in the spring but I tend to push it off into the summer um, and I just because I don't want to pull them out of school um, too many days unless there's basically no way around it um, also if you have specialist visits like for us we have to see the allergist every year and we have other specialists that we see for various reasons so I like to schedule that stuff and get it done in the summer um, also there are some procedures if you will that uh, require a lot of attention and a lot of appointments for example allergy shots um, that might be a good thing to take care of because for allergy shots it's very time intensive you have to go up there like every week for like three months so if you can get some of that the brunt of that handled over the summer that would just reduce the amount of time that you got to take the kids out for school um there was also a time where one of my kids had a tongue tie and we had to do that procedure and if any of you guys have had a kid with a tongue tie you know that it, they have to massage their tongue or you have to do these exercises and massage their tongue like six times a day um, for several weeks so that's really hard to do that during the school year during the summer it's a lot easier to manage and then um, in terms of like other appointments if you guys need your kids to have haircuts uh, you want your kids to have fresh braids, get their locks redone, anything like that. It's just so much easier to call your stylist and get that stuff on the calendar now. Um, that way you don't have to be stressed out calling a lot of people who can't squeeze you in or paying premium prices uh, to get squeezed in. So go ahead and get your stuff on the calendar now before other people are thinking about it and um, you know get it, get on the schedule early. Another thing that I think about as I am planning for the return to school is how to spread out the expenses for back to school supplies. We have four kids. Sorry, I had a little baby calling me, but we are back in business. Um, so yeah, I have four kids that I need to prepare to be ready for school. And if you save up all of those purchases for like the week before school starts for me it can feel a little intensive on the budget so I personally prefer to spread out those expenses across the summer and kind of think through what are all the things that they're going to need to return to school and I try to make a couple of purchases a month which just makes it a little bit easier for me to budget for um, so whether that's back to school flat supplies now luckily our school has a program where you can just order a back to school supply kit and we usually do that every year I my mom 
was a single mom of four kids and I remember the chaos of going back to school shopping with all of us and I'm not interested so for my four kids I just like to order the back to school supply kits um, that makes it easier you know obviously we're gonna want to have updated clothes so if the kids have outgrown anything or their clothes are looking a little ratty um, I just prefer to kind of spread out that expense throughout the summer lunch kits water bottles those little flasks that keep your food warm um, just thinking through like what are the things that you know you're gonna buy and seeing how to maybe just add one thing to your shopping list every week so that when school starts first of all you get lots of options because it is not yet to the point where people have like bomb rushed the shelves and there's only a couple options left but then also as mentioned you can plan around your budget a little easier so um, just to go along with that like especially if you know you're gonna be buying a lot of new items and refreshing you know their closet summer is a really good time to go through your clothes your kids clothes um, and declutter so that whenever you do go back to school shopping um, you know you don't have to also declutter at the same time I do know that a lot of uh, states offer like tax-free weekend to uh, remove the taxes as families are getting ready to go back to school to make it a little more cost effective. I know a lot of companies have their sales and things around that same time. So for some of you, you may prefer to wait until, you know, it's closer to school to start to go shopping so that you can take advantage of those savings. However, what I would recommend is just to doing a, uh, the fly lady calls it a 27 flame boogie in your kids closet so take a trash bag and look for 27 things that your kids you know that they don't fit that have holes that are ratty that are torn and get that stuff out of the closet it doesn't even have to be a big deal it doesn't have to be like a whole renovation of your closet it doesn't have to be a whole organization system just get the stuff out so that you are prepared and you have space for bringing in the new um, so yeah, I think that these are just the things that I like to think about and especially as schools is getting ready to come back in session, but maybe for you, your list is completely different. Um, I just like to think of what have been problematic areas for me in the past and if there are ideas or solutions to how I might want to approach it differently. Um, this year, I think the reason I started so early is because this is going to be the first time that all four of my kids will be in public school, so that's pretty exciting, but I also know that um, it's going to create a lot of work at the beginning of the school year as we need to, you know, complete forms and go to back to orientation night and back to school night, and I just won't really have time to... Um, be trying to do little things like last minute appointments and try to cram in a lot of stuff at the last minute. So I just wanted to get a lot of the stuff done so that way it can create a smoother back to school experience. Um, I don't think that there exists a world where I have nothing that needs to get done, but um, these are some ideas for how to, um, you know, try to go back with a little bit of peace and a little bit of ease. So um, these are the things that I'm thinking about, but like I mentioned, everybody has different points of stress that they have had to tackle at some point or another. So I would, so, I would totally be interested in like, what are the things that you like to focus on and um, what are things that you try to make sure they get done in the summer to create a smoother transition back to school. Um, some things that are notable that I didn't list here I know that some people like to have like back to school gifts for the teachers so summertime is a really great time to think about that stuff and potentially start buying the supplies little by little also for those of you who like to do cute like back to school photos getting your props and stuff ready that's also another notable idea so anyway yeah share your ideas down below I'd be happy I would be happy to know how you all are preparing to uh, get ready for the school season all right, I think that's all that I have for you guys today. Um, thank you so much for supporting this channel by subscribing. 
and liking and dropping your comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one.